All right, welcome to another episode of Lifestyles. I'm your host, Craig Sewing. We put a great one together for you with all of our beautiful co-hosts. We're going all over America's finest city, from the coastal scene to the social scene, and we're going to dive into the real estate market here as well. Let's go ahead and get another episode of Lifestyles started right now. like much, but coastal expert Kip Bocher has invited me for some killer brews and great food, and I hear a view to die for. I'm excited. Let's go check it out. So Kip, how did you find this spot? I was so confused when I first came in. I was like, am I in the right place? But then I got inside and I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Incredible. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing place, and, and uh, I'm a big foodie. Um, I love craft beers, and I live locally, and so we're always looking for kind of new and upcoming establishments, um, and I absolutely love this place. I come here uh, every week, you know, after a, a great day of selling real estate, yes. and look at this venue. It's incredible. What way to relax. Yeah. All right, and so we're here with the owner himself. Tell us what your inspiration was in starting this business. So when I started uh, Viewpoint Brewing, it was originally called Vigilante Brewing Company. And due to some trademark infringement rules with the brewery out in the Midwest, um, we got the opportunity to rebrand, is how I like to look at it. And uh, Megan, my designer, my also sister-in-law, okay. came about board. And uh, I was frustrated with it because I didn't know what to name our brewery. And I was so attached to Vigilante that she came in with this new concept of viewpoint that embodied the same aspects of vigilante of doing the right things for the right reasons mm -hmm. and owning your food um, to viewpoint, which is the exact same thing. It's just more about perspective and right. what all of us bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And so how did you pick this spot? Honestly, um, every now and then a blind squirrel finds a nut <laughs> and I got lucky. So my my folks actually live up the street, and you know I was looking for a lot of spaces on Miramar and your st stereotypical brewery uh, areas, and there was a little for rent sign on the side of the gate, and I took the advantage and, and, and looked, and it was everything I thought it would be. Back then it was actually a pottery, so uh, there was a lot of dust and dingy and dirty and grimy. And as a vigilante, that was very, very appealing because I was like, this is my lair. This is where I can make beer and wonderful food. And when people come to en engage on this spot, it's going to be a little bit more authentic because it doesn't exist in San Diego. Yeah, it's like you've got this whole warehouse feel and then you've got all the nature behind us and it's absolutely beautiful and it's huge too. How big is this place? Uh, in interior is about 4,500 square feet, but in total space of usable space, we got about 7,000. Wow, and when did you open? Uh, we opened about two months ago. Opening day of the races was when we launched the brewery. So what are your favorite dishes here, Chip? Well, we got a couple of them here. Um, the bone marrow, I'm a big meat eater and I love what they've done with the bone marrow here. It's absolutely spectacular. Um, you know, they've just got such a great mix. So if you're not a big meat eater and, and, and you know, they've got, they've got great salads and um, great appetizers. And if you're just coming out to have a drink, I think some of the best beers in San Diego. And what's great about this spot is that you really can't find these types of establishments in coastal North County. There's a couple of them. Mm -hmm. um, none of them are able to really serve the quality of food that Charles and Viewpoint is, is, is able to create here. And, uh, you know, I love being close. You know, I, I love being in the bubble, as we say here. And so, uh, such a cool spot. And what's great, it's, it's um, not just a restaurant and a bar, but it's also family friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can bring your kids and, you know, and, and they can go play uh, cornhole or they can go play roller balls. You know, there's, so there's a lot of activities and there's a lot of fun. And I think that's what's really kind of setting this establishment apart from everything else that we see in North County right now. Yes, absolutely. 
Yeah. And so you're you're making these beers right here. So we do. We do make all of our beers in house as far as viewpoint. Uh, is concerned, we do have guest beers on tap as well, and a lot of the uh, beers that we carry from our guests have been people in the industry that have really helped us out, either with figuring out where to put my bright tanks and fermenters, to you know how to better approach a recipe. So, as far as like an homage to them and right. a thank you, we put we put good beers on our list that come from from those guys. So, what are the beers here that we have in this flight? We have our our stout. We have a red rye IPA, mm -hmm. and then we have our mosaic pale ale. So the mosaic pale ale is one of our newer creations, which I'm very excited about, because it's actually what's called a smash beer. And what a smash beer is, is an acronym. It stands for single malt and single hop. It's very much a simple beer, but with a lot of depth of flavor in terms of how we brew it. So how we hop creates this different amounts of aroma and different amounts of bitter. And honestly, my brewer Mo nailed it on that one. So do people just hike on up, just right along this path, and just say, hey, I'm gonna just stop on off for a beer? Absolutely, all, all day, every day. That is so cool. <laughs> In fact, when we were actually building out the location, um, we were, we'd have all of our doors open, we were putting in beer tanks, and every single day people would stop by, when are you opening, when are you opening? <laughs> Which was great and very inspiring, because yeah. I know how much I needed to get open, and also time consuming, because I wasn't building my restaurant, I was talking to everybody about what we were <laughs> Yeah. But it, it, the, the beautiful part about that is that they actually do come back and have become regulars. Okay. So for me, that's the icing on the cake. Very cool. So anything else going on in the Del Mar area that I should know about? Well, you know, Del Mar, from a real estate standpoint, is one of the hottest real estate markets in not only Southern California, but in the United States. Um, San Diego was just rated by Realtor.com as the number five destination in the country to live, uh, which is pretty awesome. I mean, you. You know, here we are, we're almost at the end of September. Mm -hmm. um, we've got 75 degree weather. It's beautiful outside. The water at the ocean's still warm enough to really enjoy it. Yep. Um, and there's just so many activities to do and, and really enjoy what uh, this area has to offer. So whether you're looking to buy a home, rent a home, or invest, I mean, this is kind of the spot to be when you think about um, San Diego. And, um, and the yeah, we love it. We mm -hmm. absolutely love it. And, you know, places like this, I love places like this because I get clients asking me all the time, hey, where's a great restaurant to go? Or, you know, we're really looking for something unique. Mm -hmm. um, and off the beaten path. It's off the beaten path. Yeah. And, and uh, I just, to me, this is what San Diego is all about. You know, you have all these eclectic little towns and villages, mm -hmm. and you got great people like Charles that are thinking outside the box. Exactly. Uh, not doing the big, you know, oh, big chains. And mm -hmm. so, uh, super successful. You know, they've had nothing but, but, uh, uh, rave reviews. Rave reviews since you opened up, and I expect, you know, it's just going to get bigger from here. Okay, Kip, well, I heard you think that you are the master in cornhole, so I am going to challenge you on a game. So, are you ready? Oh, I'm totally ready. I think you might have to take off your heels, though. <laughs> Charles, I really appreciate you spending some time with us today and telling us about your amazing restaurant. I appreciate you guys coming Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Thank you. Make the best player win. Yeah. <laughs> Me. <laughs> game, Kip. I think we are both winners. There can't be any losers when you get to hang out at a super cool location like this. Well, next time, just go a little easier on me, okay? <laughs> you bet. certain times in life when you need a neutral third party to call the shots. Keep it fair. Choose Oakwood Escrow. It is a beautiful day here in Chula Vista. We're gonna be going inside this Brazilian Jiu Jitsu studio and we're gonna find out the amazing training that they're doing and also a ton of giving back to our community. We're gonna go check it out.
Yes. We are here at the Alliance Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Studio, and I have never done this before, so this is really exciting. Elias, it's so great to meet you. It's good to have you guys here. Oh Thank my God. You. Thanks, thanks for setting this up. I'm excited about this right I am now. too. I'm a little nervous though, I gotta say. A You're nervous. gonna be fine. Don't be nervous, you'll be fine. I'm a professional, so don't be, you'll be fine. Elias, this is awesome studio. Please tell me about it, how long you've been here, and a little sure. bit about your background. I've been I've been here for six years in Eastlake. I've been serving the community in Eastlake for about six years. I've been actually training for over 20 years. Wow. Um, one of the first Americans in San Diego to start training jiu-jitsu. Uh, at that time, there was only two schools in San Diego. Now there's over 120, and I'm actually, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, but I'm actually the highest ranking Mexican American in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That actually does mean something. Oh so I don't gosh. know, maybe, <laughs> maybe, in certain, maybe in certain parts of the city it means something, but I always like to throw that around. Like, you know, that's like, that's nothing official, but I am actually the highest ranking. So basically that means he's a bad man. <laughs> in a good way. In a good in way. In a good way. Yes. In a good way. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. A really good way too, Absolutely. because um, I, I'm really excited to talk about how much giving back you do. This is an sure. awesome studio and, and you're an expert at what you do, but you help disabled veterans as well and you help PTSD veterans, right. correct? Correct, yeah. So how I got started in that is, um, you know, I've been training for over 20 years we live, this San Diego is a military city. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a self-defense that I teach and it's one of the most popular, if not the most efficient forms of self-defense that anybody can learn. Mm -hmm. Ch you know, children, women, men. Um, and so naturally you're gonna get a lot of law enforcement, a lot of military that are gonna wanna partake and, and learn this form of self-defense. And just over the years, you know, you meet people, um, you build relationships and bonds, and then people, you know, go overseas and for me, you know, my friends come back after a year or two and I started to notice that some of them were just different. And immediately, you don't know why, it's just different, you know? And so, little by little, I just started kind of, you know, hearing, oh, so-and-so doesn't train anymore because of this. And then you start hearing about the suicides and, and you kind of start piecing things together. Um, and what really hit it for me was one day around, like, it's it's 1.30, so it was about 2.15, right? And I was doing paperwork here, and a former student of mine had come in, hadn't seen him for a while. He parked right there on the outside, and he comes in, and he's drunk, and he's high, right? Mm -hmm. And he tells me that he wants to shoot himself, that he wants to kill himself. And so we stayed right here. He was on that bench, and I was on my desk, and we stayed talking for, like, two and a half hours, three hours, something like that, right? And that was the first, and he was asking me if he could come back, he wanted to come back and train. Mm -hmm. He was explaining to me that uh, the camaraderie, the brother that he had here, he couldn't find it anywhere else besides the military, right? And when he's on the mat, that that's his release. And he knows that if he's not doing this on the mat, he's drinking or doing drugs, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, of course, like my first inclination, yes, come back, of course, come and train. And then I started figuring out, okay, if he's going through this, how many other people are going through this? Now, now I start to connect the dots. You hear about PTSD and you read about it, but then when you actually put a face to it, and not just somebody that you kind of know, but a former, somebody that you've had a relationship with, now it hits home, right? So now for me, um, my father always told me that, so my father had the American, you wanna talk about American, my father came from Mexico with nothing, he built a construction company. He was very successful. Now he's a pastor. He brought over his 11 brothers and sisters. Like wow. that, to me, that's the American dream. Yeah. And my father always explained to me, being successful is not about how much money you have in the bank. It's not about what kind of car you drive or what, where you live, what, what kind of house you're living in. Being successful is about how much you can give back, right? And so I feel that I'm very blessed to be like, let's, let's be real, let's face it. I'm making a living off of teaching jujitsu. Right? I'm making a living off of working out every day. Uh, to me, I, I, I feel that I'm completely blessed to be able to, like I have fun. Like I, I'm sure we know a lot of people that hate waking up in the morning and going to their job. They hate where they work. They hate where they make the money. And I, I can't wait to, like I don't want to go home sometimes. Like You clearly love what you yes, do. Yes, and so I feel like I'm blessed, right? So for me, realizing that I'm blessed, I begin to think how can I give back? And then that's how I started to formulate um, what eventually would become my nonprofit. That's awesome, and you're also helping with the San Diego Police Department. You have a program yes. that's helping, yes. right? Yes, so I work with the, with the diversion program, uh, SDPD, and what I do there is I go and speak to these kids every six weeks, and what diversion is, is uh, it's what it sounds like. Kids get in trouble, 
and they're given a second chance. And so, and for whatever reason, the judge decides, okay, you're going to get a second chance. We're not going to put you in the system. And we all know, if, if we don't know, 75% of the time after, when you're in the system, you're going to get right back in. 75% of those people get put right back in the system. So what I do is I go and I give them mentoring, I give them counseling, and they come to me for six weeks. If they pass that program for six weeks, I give them a lifetime membership. That's amazing. And That's so, I, and I supply all of their equipment for them. The second they come in, I hand them a gi, I hand them everything they would need uh, to feel like they are a part of the team, right? I also uh, help with and give uh, gas money, buy bus tickets, what bus passes, anything that is going to get them here. Because a lot of times, that's another thing is transportation. Right. So I even tell the parents that are involved, give me the gas receipt. And I'll pay you back. Together. For me, I just want That's them huge. in here. That's I just amazing. want them That's huge. You, you clearly have such an incredible heart and passion for what you're doing and the people that you're helping. Dean, I am so happy that you introduced us to Elias. I mean, I'm speechless. I love how much your heart is shining through in um, what you do here. And it's truly amazing. Now I see why yes. you love referring him in this community. You're already an expert in this community Thanks. with your own real estate broker, yes. brokerage. Yes. And um, so you're known in this community. Tell me what's going on in the community and how much you love having a resource like Man, this here. I tell you, there's so much growth in Chula Vista and East Lake area. There's, I mean, if you can imagine, eight communities have are either new or in construction um, in this area which is gigantic for san diego um, more to come i mean there it's it's growing more and more every 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 day it sounds like they're they're always planning new things to to develop here there's a there's a hotel coming there's a university coming nearby wow. yeah so there's tons of stuff that's happening down here and i'm glad to be a part of it and i'm glad he's he's a part of the community as well it's so great to be able to shine a light on a business like yours and what you're doing because not every day you get the opportunity there's great people out there do make Making a difference in the community and we don't always hear about it so this is so special to be able to hear about what you're doing be able to have the community know about it now you can refer people and let people know what's going on in the community there's ways a, that we can support your business there's such a there's such a big um, military um, you know folks that live in this area and um, I think it's important that they they meet Elias and his business and find out more about what he's doing here uh, if they haven't already heard. Yeah, you know? I agree. I love when I get the opportunity to meet amazing people like this that are going above and beyond to giving back. Biggest heart, incredible facility here at this Jiu Jitsu location. I really encourage anybody to come in and take his self defense course. It's so important that we know self defense. Every woman, every man, you never know when you're going to need it. And make sure you come and check this place out. certain times in life when you need a neutral third party to call the shots. Keep it fair. Choose Oakwood Escrow. is no stranger to a touch of classic Hollywood glamour. Joining me today is Scott Ulrich, the best developer in town, and his special guest to tell us about a new film festival coming to beautiful Coronado Island. for bringing me here today. Tell us why we're at the Dell and who's our special guest? Well, we're back at the Dell because the Dell does so much for the community. As the Dell's been a sponsor of all kinds of other events, they're also the presenting sponsor for the Coronado Island Film Festival that Doug St. Dennis, my guest today, has brought to the island. It was her vision and she's the, the founder and the executive director of the film festival. And Doug's here to tell us about the film festival. It's upcoming here in November. Wonderful. So this is a brand new festival. Well, we're young and enthusiastic. This, <laughs> we're just about to have our second annual coming up November 9th through 12th, which is Veterans Weekend, Veterans Day weekend. Okay. Perfect for Coronado with our, with our military history. A lot history. of people coming into town. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 
And this hotel, which I've been coming to as a Navy junior since I was a little girl, and it has not lost its magic for me. And if I had had any idea that they would be our presenting sponsor, we could not do this festival without them. And they are wonderful, and um, as is the city of Coronado, they're a major sponsor. And the Village Theater, which is our vintage theater on Orange Avenue, 1947, about to have its 70th anniversary. Wow. We're celebrating that with the film Back to the Future next month. So tell us about this theater, the Vintage Village Theater. The Vintage the films Village are Theater be? opened in 1947. As I said, we're about to celebrate the 70th anniversary of that. Um, and we all, I went to it as a kid. You went to yeah, it with your children. Yeah, we came out here, exactly. And it when fell. films were 25 cents. Yeah, right. <laughs> they were a dollar, I think, yeah, when I Yeah, well, you're younger than I am, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it fell in disrepair and then was shuttered yeah, no for 10 for years. Theater, yeah. We had no theater. And it was just a heartbreak for the community. And the city of, of Coronado okay. heard and stepped up and they partnered and they became the partner in restoring this vintage village theater with Lance Allspaw of Vintage Cinemas. I mean, he's, he's done this in Los Angeles and all over, and he's one of our most generous sponsors. And you were telling me now it's one of the top five vintage theaters? Yeah, yeah, it was named one of the top five vintage theaters in the country. And Pretty I love good. it because it's got murals, it's, yeah. It encapsulates what Coronado's all about. Not that commercialized feel, it's that mom and pop, you know, your local shopping, kind oh, yeah. of giving back to the community by just even going to yeah. that theater. And that wonderful sort of sidewalk, waiting in line to go in, and the buzz that goes on, and it's, it's a favorite place. And we did, back in the preservation, we preserved the original Old terrazzo sidewalk, yeah, yeah. out wow. in front. Yeah. yeah. So that was there since 1947. We have the one four-day festival, which is a destination festival. And there's only one Coronado, and the Coronado Island Film Festival. How many festivals can call themselves and island film festivals? That's us. That's right. And what makes it special, too, for the community is it is a destination. So people come here and spend the weekend and browse and use the restaurants and shops and hotels oh. and everything. And, and our and, restaurants are involved. Right. Our opening night party, which is going to be huge. We have Coronado restaurants, maybe 14 of them, doing tastes of Coronado. And then everybody leaves. That will be from 5 to 6.30, November 9th. Then everybody leaves and goes to our opening night films. All the film venues are in Coronado. It's a walkable festival. If you don't want to walk, if you're feeling lazy, we have a free trolley that'll just be zipping around. Two free trolleys, yeah. Just keeping everyone on the island. Everyone's on the island, oh yeah. And this, the community of Coronado has just embraced this. We have 200, more than 200 volunteers. Most of them are local community residents and they're so excited about it. The joy just spreads, you know, we're very enthusiastic. Our opening night major film is Darkest Hour, which is getting a lot of Oscar buzz. Really? That's about wow. um, Winston Churchill. It stars Gary Oldman and was shot in London, and is produced by Coronado's own Lisa Bruce. Really? Local yes. person, wow. She That's great. grew I up know here, that. Yeah. she's from a Navy family. Great. She also produced The Theory of Everything. Oh, which, I love yeah, that movie. Which She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And she really has uh, brought her film to Coronado, and she'll be there to in meet everybody and introduce the film. We have, well, you organized this and brought a lot of uh, big time judges as well, too. Oh, we have a, oh my gosh, yeah. we have this incredible jury yeah. of, of noted, and they'll all be staying down at Lowe's Hotel. All three of our major four star hotels are involved. The Marriott will host our music in the movies. We have a music component this year. We have Stephen Bishop, we have um, the filmmaker Ray DiFoletta is going to be our director award 
but he's also a musician, a jazz musician. We have panels, we have a woman in film panel, music in the movies, and then Leonard Balton, who is our... Everybody knows him. Yeah. Uh, everybody yeah, knows Leonard, yeah. and he came last year with us, and he and his wife, Alice, fell in love with us, and we fell in love with them, and he's back, and um, he's our, our festival host and honorary jury president. What was your philosophy behind starting this? It's so the involved. philosophy was the pure joy of film and the power of film. But you know, Coronado has had an enduring love affair with the movies and Hollywood since his very earliest days. And this hotel has played a starring role in it. I mean, staying here, Charlie Chapman, Chaplin, all the, all Mar the old Marilyn Monroe, great. Some Like It Hot. Oh, yeah, Some here, Like It Hot, yeah, yeah. filmed right on the beach. Oh, and this is so great because our, our signature closing night will be a screening outside, which we had last year, and it went over so well, we're doing it again. Uh, on a lawn somewhere? Uh, on the beach. Oh, we're wow, even and, better. And the Hotel Dell sponsors this, and we, we, we screen Some Like It Hot, and everybody gathers around bonfires, and and they're going to be grilling burgers on the beach, and it's just the perfect way to end sure. this four pretty magical days. What is going on in the Coronado market? Because we've got this beautiful, revitalized theater, so many things to do here. Well, all what because the of the Coronado Film all Festival. All because of the Film Festival. Yeah. Isaac's going to buzz, and we're going to have a big research yeah. for sure, for sure. <laughs> now the market's come great. We had a, you know, a, a peak in the market here in 2006 and 7, and a lull that fell down to 11, and all the way back up to 2016, we kind of got back to where we were. and the peak of the market 2006 and 7 and this year we've kind of kept that level going it's I just checked it recently we've had about the same amount of sales first part of this year as we had the first part of 16 and the prices are about the same so we're holding the market's great got a low inventory a lot of nice really nice special properties it's a little bit top heavy the the prices have been rising and you know the average price is a little bit over three million so it's pretty expensive here but uh, it's a great community and a great place to come and either spend a vacation or live full time. So I'm lucky to be able to do both. There's going to be so many people coming into town. Yeah. So they're going to see this hidden I gem. Am. And I'm sure. And they will say, I have to live here. Exactly. We have, we have a little have bit of that all here. the time. Took yeah. the words yeah. out of my mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you both so much for joining me this afternoon. And I look forward to the festival. Sure. What a pleasure thank it you. was. Thanks, thank nice you. Thank this is going to be for the big finale to a week of incredible films, panels, and events. Be sure to block out Veterans Day weekend on your calendars. I'll see you there. All right, that's all for Lifestyle, celebrating America's finest city. Thank you so much for tuning in with us every weekend. And don't forget, you can engage in the conversation as well. Would love for you to follow us on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're active on all of it, celebrating the greatest city in the greatest country on the planet. I'm your host, Craig Sewing. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.